The Great Gatsby is universally accepted as one of the best American novels of all time. It explores the American dream, it freezes an idealist life in the 1920s, looks at different themes and ideas, and does all of this while remaining interesting and fun to read. I think that calling it the definitive American novel describes it perfectly. When I saw the 2013 film, I felt somewhat disappointed, and not necessarily because of the decisions that Baz Luhrmann made, like the soundtrack or some of the more stylistic choices. My biggest problem with the movie is that it's a story that can't inherently be told through film. Let's take a step back, because I know that that isn't the popular mentality. Stanley Kubrick once stated, if it can be written or thought, it can be filmed. Now, clearly the story of The Great Gatsby can be filmed, it has been, in fact, The Great Gatsby has been adapted to film a total of five times. All of these took a different approach to telling the story, yet all of them seem to have fallen short to the very high bar set by F. Scott Fitzgerald in 1925. For the sake of being straightforward, I would like to focus this video on the 2013 film directed by Baz Luhrmann in his adaptation of the original novel. I will be discussing both, so make sure you're familiar with the story before continuing on with this video. There are two predominant layers in Fitzgerald's novel. The surface level story where Nick is taken into the world of the 1920s party scene and watches the relationship of Gatsby and Daisy unfold. And if you read the story as just that, the movies do a pretty great job at telling that story. But what makes the original novel so great isn't the somewhat cliched love story on the surface, but instead the themes and ideas hidden below the story. The Great Gatsby is a novel about things that don't exist. Characters exist on the surface level, but below that, they represent things that are intangible. Jay Gatsby is the representation of the American dream. It looks like he has achieved it. He has an enormous house, he throws extravagant parties, and is wealthy beyond imagination. To everybody who reads the book, they envision Gatsby one way, because his life is supposed to be their American dream. But when you film that, you take the imagination out of it. No longer does everybody who watches it have their own interpretation, but they are now forced to only have one. They can only see one. Gatsby himself is supposed to be a mysterious character. We rarely learn anything concrete about him. Instead, we just learn ideas. Listen to how he is described in the book. The truth was, Jay Gatsby of West Egg, Long Island sprang from his platonic conception of himself. He was a son of God, a phrase which, if it means anything, means just that, and he must be about his father's business, the service of the vast, vulgar, and meretricious beauty. So he invented just the sort of Jay Gatsby that a 17-year-old boy would be likely to invent, and to this conception, he was faithful to the end. In full honesty, I don't think any actor, living or dead, can truly embody this character, because he seems so inhuman. He is what everyone wants to aspire to be, but never can do. This lack of imagination that is presented through the film is one of the biggest problems with it. Fitzgerald's writing style is one that paints a picture for you. Everything seems to be laid out and formatted, and it's up to the reader to put their finishing touches on it, to add the details themselves. The movie takes that out of the equation. It simply gives you a story that you're already familiar with and asks you to soak it in. The imagination of building up this perfect world is taken out of the story, while the overarching narrative remains. When I say that this is a story that can't be filmed, I don't mean literally. It's not due to a technical limitation. But instead, the problem is that this is a story that is built around the imagination. And when you film the story, you take away the imagination, which is the essence of the novel. But that's not the only reason. Another important reason is the lacking focus in the movie. The Great Gatsby is a book about America, and how the promises of a land where success is determined by how hard you work have been broken. The people who are rich and successful do not work hard. They are out at parties all night and they drink during the day and rarely, if ever, work. It's the people who are lowest in society that do all the work in the Valley of the Ashes. In order to achieve success or wealth, you have to cheat your way to the top. And once you reach the top, you will always remain unsatisfied, always wanting something that you can't have that is just out of reach. The original book was a condemnation of the lifestyles of the very rich. Yet, this movie doesn't seem to condemn it or even look down upon it. This movie seems to glamorize it. Are you ready?
This movie's focus seemed to have shift away from the moral condemnation of this lifestyle into the glamorization of these excessive parties. It makes living recklessly look fun. A big part of this movie's advertising was on the 3D and the excessive party moments. It's as if this movie is saying, this is fun, come experience it in theaters. Yet, its message goes against everything that the novel stood for and that the novel promoted. Now, even though we do see some consequences of living this excessive lifestyle when Myrtle dies, it doesn't change what we have seen over the past two hours. This movie features about 25 minutes of party scenes, yet we spend just minutes in the Valley of the Ashes. I'd like to compare this to Leonardo DiCaprio's other movie released that year, The Wolf of Wall Street, which also showed excessive parties and a moral abhorrent lifestyle. In The Wolf of Wall Street, we don't see many victims, but we do see this lifestyle come crashing down and the party life that these characters live collapse, but we also come to dislike the characters we have grown to see over the past three hours. In The Great Gatsby, we see Gatsby as a tragic character, and not somebody who we are rooting for to fail. In the story, the eyes of T.J. Eckelberg represent the loss of individual values in America. They sit above the Valley of Ashes, judging everybody. Over time, they lost their meaning, going from advertising to a moral judge of character. Just like the eyes themselves, this movie lost track of what it should be, slowly corrupted over time to be something completely different. Thank you very much for watching. I generally try to stay positive and look at why movies are great in this series, but I wanted to shift focus and try to cover why The Great Gatsby can only work as a book. I actually really like the 1974 and 2013 versions of the story, but really don't think that they're anywhere close to the book. Next week, we are going to be returning to the world of film, but also staying in the world of the early 20th century America by covering film noir and briefly neo-noirs. Got a lot to say about that, and that video is going to be linked on the right of the screen and out next Saturday. On the left is going to be my last video where we covered Interstellar. Check that video out if you haven't seen it, and I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.